went from 140 maximum dips during a workout a couple weeks later using the cool mitt approach 600 dips now here's the the interesting thing then does a workout with no core cooling mm -hmm. and is able to generate the same output because he's adapted The cool mitt basically, it, it looks like it's just cooling your hand, but it actually circulates cold water in contact with your hand so that it maintains just the right temperature. So you couldn't hold um, frozen cans or anything because then they, these would constrict. Mm -hmm. So what you're trying to do is keep the portal so you can cool the core temperature. And the reason it works for performance is that muscular contractions, the reason you fail, like the fit muscle failure is because this the muscle actually heats up locally and a enzyme called pyruvate kinase is involved in generating ATP for muscular contractions and it has a very limited temperature window so you get that muscle gets too hot and you start failing yeah um you cool and you can just do more and more and more repetitions and so some of the examples are pretty crazy um guy from the 49ers went from doing 140 dips to 600 dips in a single session. You just sort of, I don't, but that's doing it multiple days. So I don't want to set too high an expectation for today. But the idea is that you, you just feel like you could do more mm -hmm. because the muscle just doesn't fail. I mean, it's not going to make you stronger because your strength is limited by other things, mm -hmm. but it allows you to do more of the, of the, of yeah, the work you can get Getting stronger for more capacity. Yeah. Reminds me of something else. Slingshot. Yeah. Oh, I had a different answer. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah it's or a slingshot. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's get out of the office. Get out of the yeah. office. Into the. Yeah, your gym is so impressive. I'm, cool. I don't think I've ever seen a gym Let's like that. Some. This is about two thirds of the way through uh, full with ice and water. The water's gonna cool and then it's gonna run into the cool mitt. And you might think that that was straightforward to engineer, but it actually, what's really important is that the contact surface stayed the same temperature. Because if you're really warm and you're heating it up just by contact, mm -hmm. that's a problem, right? And if you were to just hold on to some bricks of ice, for instance, then the arteries and veins would constrict and then you're not gonna pass. Sure. You can't really pass cool into the body technically. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the physics nerds out there will um, hang me from the highest pole if I say that, but you can cool the core of the body this way faster than you could do it any way else. You could also use your foot. So they're, they're developing foot cooling devices for um, people who are wearing gloves for MMA or for occupational reasons. I mean, we think about this for sport, but it, um, people who work in very hot environments, firefighters, CDF, places where hyperthermia is common, uh, working in the desert, uh, military, et cetera, they have cooling units, mm. um, this cooling unit basically. Mm -hmm. So there are only a couple hundred of these, um, a smart, uh, good home engineer could probably engineer something like it, but it's actually pulling it through by vacuum. Mm. So we're gonna play with this today by doing some sets and then in between sets, cooling. The cool mitt is basically cooling the palm. And the reason for doing that is that one reason why you, any of us fail to be able to do more work, more repetitions, more sets, et cetera, is because the muscle heats up and the core of the body heats up. So you might think, oh, well then just put some, you know, an ice pack on the neck. That's actually, terrible thing to do and we'll talk about why but that actually doesn't cool you off very fast you could say get in an ice bath that actually eventually will cause you to heat increase your body temperature to compensate muscular performance shuts down failure occurs because of an enzyme called pyruvate kinase pyruvate kinase is important in the conversion of atp into essentially for generation of muscle energy so when you fail it's because the muscle heats up locally if you can keep core body temperature down pyruvate kinase can remain active and you can literally do more sets and repetitions. So some of the more impressive uh, effects that have been seen for endurance have been a, a doubling of output with no um, extension and recovery time. Not increase in speed, right? It's not even increase strength in the gym. What it'll allow you to do is more repetitions and more sets without feeling fatigued and still allow you to recover. It also seems to prevent delayed onset muscle soreness for reasons that are still unclear. But there's a really interesting theory that, you know, lactate, people think lactic acid, humans don't actually make lactic acid, but lactate, people think, oh, we fail because of lactate, right? Maybe we have lactate because we fail. The relationship between lactate and muscle failure is still unclear. And just by saying that, I'm gonna get about half of the internet um, bro science folks on my back, but stand by because there's a paper on the way. What, what about getting yourself accustomed to training in heat, uh, the way that like Gabrielle Reese and her husband, they, I think he 
trains in his sauna or something, right? Yeah, so Laird will get on the uh, assault bike in the sauna. It kind of sounds opposite of this, but maybe it yeah. would be productive to be able to teach your body to cool down in instances where you're exercising, maybe, I don't know. Oh, absolutely. So one thing that we have going right now with Stanford, uh, my lab and Craig Heller's lab, who, really it's Craig Heller in our department of biology that discovered this so-called AVAs, arteri arteriovastis astomosis, vein arteriovenous astomosis, which are these things on the palms of the hands, on the upper face and on the bottoms of the feet, where it goes directly from arteries to veins, which allows, um, a portal for cooling or for passing heat into the body. Again, using those terms kind of loosely. Um, but Craig and my lab are working with UFC because fighters will learn to be heat adapted as they start heading into a fight. So they'll mm -hmm. sit in the sauna. You actually get better at sweating the more oh, you see. expose yourself to heat. Uh, you basically teach the, ner the neurons that contact the sweat glands. Mm -hmm. That's how, how we sweat is actually right. neurons uh, release certain transmitters. And then, the, so the sweat glands through neuroplasticity get better at sweating, mm. right? The problem with dropping a lot of heat is being hyperthermic is, isn't good for the brain mm. or for the organs of the body. So we are thinking about people coming out of the sauna and, go, and going into the cool mitt. We're also thinking about people maybe even being in the sauna, seeing whether or not you can get the sweating because right. they want, the, they want the, the body weight dump. Right, they want the water right. dump, which is a dangerous thing if you're also heating up the organs. So there are a lot of um, parameters to play with. Interesting. And, and I should be really clear, I don't have any relationship mm -hmm. to CoolMed except they were kind enough to give us yeah. a, a unit, so. Basically what you're gonna do is in between sets, so what we would have done if we were gonna do a workout with kind of with CoolMed is you're gonna put your hand in there. It's gonna take a second to cool off. You're gonna notice it's not ice cold. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just put your hand in there. Top or just uh, yeah, just right, just slide in right on top of that. Uh, oh, on you top feel? of it on top of that thing. Yeah, because you want it in contact with this surface, which it's a portal system. So basically you're, it goes AVAs, arteriovenous astomoses. This is in Gray's Anatomy textbooks. It's on palms of your hand, top of your face, bottoms of the feet. And you can, in this case, it's cooling his blood, but to, the, to his core. So what you would normally do if you were gonna really test this out, and, and we, what we do is we do a day, we do, let's say 10 sets of dips, and you go max each one with two minutes rest in between, no cooling. Come back two days later or three days later and you would cool in between the sets. And what you'd notice is you would do far more reps across those and on the last set, very likely, you'd say, I could do 10 more just like this and 10 more and 10 more. And so the record so far, you know, play for the 49ers, you can go to coolmit.com and see the, they have links to data and papers and so forth if you yeah. want that substantiate. Went from 140 maximum dips during a workout as I'm done, uh, a couple weeks later, using the cool mitt approach, 600 dips. Now here's the, the interesting thing, then does a workout with no core cooling, so walks in mm -hmm. and is able to generate the same output because he's adapted. So it's, it's not that you have to cool to get the performance, it's a training tool that yeah, a lot of sports teams use and yeah. uh, now select sports teams. So I wonder if like, like I'm thinking about this, if someone had this at a jujitsu school, Mm -hmm. Right, and you're going round after round. Like after a round of six minutes, you go and you do this yeah. real quick. How like how much? How many more rounds you could probably do? Well, and that's going to vary from person to person. But that's actually what we're doing with Duncan French at the UFC Performance Center is seeing having people cool. They're going to be cooling the bottoms of their feet. Here's a question I have: you know, is What gloves? has it been compared to? Has it been compared to? Because like maybe that's a little meditative. Like you're right. stuck there. You can't go anywhere. Sure, it's been compared to yeah, not passing the correct temperature. Right. Um, it's also been uh, compared to um, testosterone cypionate uh, without cooling, right. which isn't a really direct comparison. Yeah, yeah. But you know, for a while there were people walking around saying, you know, better than steroids. I think I that's a, that was you, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a little get bit get of an unfair comparison because they are two different. I mean, that's how you get attention, yeah, yeah t testosterone's adjusting a number of things: uh, ability to lean into action. I mean, I've always said testosterone's yeah. main function is to make effort feel good. So yeah, it resets you. Now, of course, there's a little, now I told you that, so there is a little bit of a, so this isn't a controlled experiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's gonna feel a little damp and that's because um, Nasima was perspiring a little bit, but some guys have written to me and gotten really good results finding it like a cold object in the gym. You know, it's sort of a poor man's version of it. Um, but yeah, it's hard to know, right? Is it cold enough, is it not? So this is circulating the correct temperature through continuously. So even if you were boiling hot, yeah. I do think that at some point in the not too distant future that these units will exist in gyms where people will just plug in between sets 
or carry them around. It's, it's a little clunky. I may be weird to bring that to a gym unless it's your gym. Um, but also if, you, if you're training and you've ever done the thing where you're warm, you shower and then you go to dinner and you're like, this actually will allow you to walk out of the gym nice, icy cold. Or before uh, some important public thing or something you can cool. If you're having trouble falling asleep at night, oftentimes it's your body temperature is too high. Body temperature needs to drop by it a degree or three. So you can do that and then you find you fall asleep really well. Question yeah. you. you mentioned that an individual's ability to cool down pretty much also perspire. I'm assuming people, is there a correlation with people that sweat a lot during exercise and better recovery mm -hmm. because they're sweating more to cool? Is that, yeah. is there anything? Yeah, you can, you can heat adapt and you can get better at sweating because the, the reason you sweat is that neurons actually innervate, as we say, they connect to the sweat gland. And there's this whole system related to acetylcholine release and norepinephrine release. And so sitting in the sauna, getting better at sweating helps you dump heat better. It's one of the ways we dump heat. We dump heat through respiration, we dump heat through sweating, and we dump heat through these portal systems. So if you're ever overheating someplace, you know, throwing a cold ice thing around your neck might feel good, but all you're doing is cooling the, the blood going to your brain and actually your organs could still be overheating. People have died that way. Um, and so if someone's overheating, I once, my bulldog almost overheated on a, on a hike once. You wanna get the bottom, you wanna get their paws into water, right? Cause they can't dump heat anywhere else cause they've got fur everywhere else. They can do it a little bit from their nose. Yeah. How does that feel? Great. Yeah. He's ready for another yeah. 900 pound bench. <laughs> you could go straight into a, a full workout again. Now, of course, at some point you have to eat and recover and work and do things. So it's a question of like, you know, volume isn't always the goal, right? But um, I think it's a great tool for breaking through barriers. And I think it's a great tool for adjusting to, uh, like if you want to transition out of a workout. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds to two minutes. You know, two minutes starts to interfere with the workout a yeah, little bit, yeah, depending, yeah. but you know, a lot of people are on their phone for three minutes between sets. So, yeah. I no longer allow myself to look at my phone during a workout. That's smart. What, and I'll listen to music in the room, but not in my head, because then next thing I know I'm on there. Because workouts were getting longer and worse. You know, when cyclists wear gloves, it's completely counterproductive. There, there is a company engineering cool grips for cycling yeah. to keep the hands cool while you cycle. When riders typically wear gloves, yeah. they're limiting a substantial portal for heat dump. It's like killing the exhaust. It's like plugging the exhaust on a car. It's terrible. Now sir, there's a company developing cooling grips mm -hmm. for the cycle. I've seen some of the data. This guy's just going, 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 go. Because you're not heating up. So. So there two, I don't want to get too technical, but if you were to run on a treadmill, your heart rate would go up. But there's another reason your heart rate goes up, which is you're heating up. It's right. called cardiac drift. If you could cool yourself while you run, what you'd find is you could run much faster and much further. And so that's now being worked into the hand grips. The question is, at what point do people say that this is performance enhancing? Like, Oh, it's definitely performance enhancing. It's performance enhancing, but yeah. like, what you're saying, some of these things can somewhat rival the effects of mm -hmm. taking certain types of drugs. Sure. Right? And not everyone has access to this kind of stuff. Right. Only certain people actually even have access to that coolness. Certain teams. Oh, certain teams certain are using it right now. We've got it. And they're right? recovering faster and training harder. That's right. So. Because a lot of training, as you know, as somebody who's not uh, chemically augmented, right? The SEMA is that a lot of your ability to get good at anything is how often you can w do good quality work, yeah. right? This is also true in academia, right? I was, you know, I didn't have kids when I was in graduate school. I didn't have anything else going on. So I lived in the, I worked hundred hours a week. Jesus. Now people who have, I still work about 90 hours a week, <laughs> but I have a lab and a podcast and working on a book and a, but if, but I don't have children, right? So, but people with children have to devote more time there. So you could say certain lifestyles are performance enhancing because of the number of obligations you do not have to engage in. You can, right? can also say we all have access to the same stuff. Right, so it's a matter of choices, right? That was what was important to me. I always knew I'd be an old dad. So I plan to have kids when I'm, starting to have kids when I'm 50. Yeah. You've been yeah. using this or you said? I was using it. What do you think? After. It's, it's, it's There's good. something there. There's something yeah. there. I mean, we're not being really, uh, it's not a very well controlled experiment. The right way to do it would have been do a workout, get the yeah. baselines, then I'll come back with it. Uh huh. 
right? And I've talked to them. I'm going to get a unit to give you guys. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then do the workout with that. 